Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video I'm going to talk about uh, a symmetric cross-section in the partial plastic behavior. It means that, uh, for example, in a pure bending cross-section, which is asymmetric, the bending moment is greater than elastic bending moment, but it is less than plastic bending moment. And we are going to see how to determine what part of the cross-section is elastic and which part or what part of the cross-section is plastic. Let's do it. So in the previous example, we solved the same cross-section as shown here, 160 to 16 for the top flange, 240 by 8 for the web and 80 by 16 for the bottom flange and we calculated elastic and plastic bending moment which are 137.5 kilonewton meter and 102 kilonewton meter respectively now in this example we are going to check if the m is 100 for example 25 kilonewton meter what part of the cross section would remain elastic so as far as the moment is greater than elastic moment, so it is not elastic anymore. And as far as it is less than plastic, it is partially plastic. Now the question is, what is the elastic height of the cross section? Or what is the depth of being plastic? It can be either way. So for this, let's have a look on the Elastic neutral axis and plastic neutral axis we calculated earlier uh, 107.6 millimeter for elastic neutral axis from the top and for plastic neutral axis it was 56 millimeter. Now when the bending moment is something between the neutral axis should be somewhere between these two. But the best idea is to calculate the neutral axis such a way that we notice the top flange becomes plastic. So then we can compare if 125 kilonewton meter is less than that or greater than that. So if we look at MY 102 kilonewton meter, so it means that when the bending moment approaches to 102 kilonewton meter, the bottom flange yields. And from this moment, if we increase the bending moment gradually, the neutral axis it's starting to go up and the sigma or stress in the bottom flange remains to be sigma y and then more fibers of the uh, cross section will yield on the other flange which is here top flange stress starts to grow here we can see that when bending moment is 102 kilonewton meter the stress in the top flange is less than sigma y now, when we increase it, increase the bending moment, then this stress increases as well. Until a time that that stress is also sigma y. So first, we need to calculate with what bending moment the other flange also yields. For this, we can sketch the cross section one more time. 160 millimeter, 16, 240. 16 80 millimeter and also better to sketch the side view of cross section so here we have sigma y and with the elastic bending moment so if this is elastic neutral axis the distance was 107.6 millimeter and for sure the other side is a smaller the stress so here with m equals to 102 kilonewton meter sigma in bottom flange will be m y divided by i i will write down this sigma bottom flange and distance was 240 32 minus 107.6 and it was 164.4 millimeter so it will be 250 megapascal we we know that but in the other side sigma in top flange will be 102 kilonewton meter times 107.6 divided by moment of inertia which was 
75 10 power by 7 so it's 163 megapascal we can use also triangle principle to calculate this it's it's the same so now when we increase the bending moment from 102 the bottom flange is already in its yielding limit as a result the bending moment would not increase that stress in that level instead other fibers closer to the neutral axis starts to yield and also in the other side which is top flange the stress increases as well so for example here is one example that for example some part of the bottom of the section reaches to yield limit but in the other side it's still elastic until in a time that you increase the bending moment and here this is also sigma y to understand if 125 kilonewton meter is uh, in the limit that the top side of the neutral axis is elastic or plastic is that we calculate first with what bending moment the maximum stress in the top flange will be sigma y so what is uh, unknown here is the height of the web which is in compression for example here or above the neutral axis sigma y this also is sigma y we can assume that the height of the web which is in compression or above the neutral axis is y and the flange was 16 millimeter so here we can see that due to triangle principle the height from the new neutral axis to the place that in the web we have uh, also elastic depth in for example tension or compression this is also 16 plus y now the cross section needs to be in equilibrium as a result the tension force in one side should be as same as compression side on the other side of the neutral axis uh, if you want to be very accurate then we can calculate what is the stress in the connection of the web to the top flange so easily we can write it down that y divided by 16 plus y times sigma y is the stress in this elevation so to write it easier we can assume that the top flange is f1 the web above the neutral axis is f2 f3 f4 and f5 so it is much more easier if we write down the area and the average stress in each uh, part for example for part number one which is top flange here area is 160 times 16 square millimeter and the average stress is sigma y plus y divided by 16 plus y times sigma y divided by 2 so the same for others part number 2 web in for example compression area is y times 8 square millimeter and sigma var is half of because on one side it is zero the other side is y divided by 16 plus y times sigma y half of it part 3 which is web in tension area is 16 plus y times 8 a square millimeter and sigma bar is sigma y divided by 2 part 4 web in plastic phase area is so the entire depth of the web is 240 millimeter and so this plastic height will be 240 millimeter minus y minus 16 minus y or 240 minus 16 minus 2y 224 minus 2y millimeter now the area will be 224 minus 2y times 8 a square millimeter and as far as it is plastic sigma bar or average value of stress is sigma y and finally part number five which is the bottom flange 
area is 80 millimeter times 16 and it is also plastic so sigma bar is sigma y now we can calculate the force f1 is sigma bar 1 times a1 f2 is sigma bar 2 times a2 f3 is sigma bar 3 times a3 and so on if we show uh, the forces so f1 and f2 are compressive and f3 f4 and f5 are in the opposite direction as a result f1 plus f2 should be as same as f3 plus f4 plus f5 i substitute from sigma y then it will be 1 plus y divided by 16 plus y divided by 2 times 160 times 16 plus y divided by 16 plus y times 1 over 2 times y times a equals to the other side also we can factor sigma y it will be 1 over 2 times 16 plus y times 8 plus 1 times 2 to 4 minus 2y times 8 plus 1 times 80 times 16. So from here we can simply calculate what y is 56.72. Now if we substitute this value sigma y to the equation of sigma bar of each part we can have the sigma bar and then with having area of each part we can calculate forces f1 to f5 so sigma 1 here will be and y equals to 56.72 millimeter so sigma 1 will be 222.5 megapascal and area 1 was 160 times 16 square millimeter and from here we can calculate force 1 which is sigma bar 1 times a1 570 kilometer so the same can be applied to other parts sigma bar 2 is y divided by 16 plus y times 250 97.5 megapascal and area of 2 was 8 times y 454 square millimeter as a result f2 will be 44.24 kilometer sigma 3 half of sigma y 125 megapascal and a3 16 plus y times 8 72.72 kilometer and then sigma bar 4 250 megapascal and a4 is 224 minus 2y times 8 221 kilonewton and finally sigma bar 5 250 megapascal and a5 is 80 times 16 320 kilonewton now here we can cross check if uh, the equilibrium is valid 570 plus 44.24 is 614 kilonewton and f3 f4 and f5 72.72 72, 221 320 614 kilometer so now we have forces and if we find out the center of each force towards this neutral axis then we can calculate with what bending moment this would happen top flange bottom flange and we know that the neutral axis is somewhere with the distance of 56.72 from the joint of web to flange connection towards the neutral axis or better to write down y and this is 16 millimeter so here we have f1 which is 570 then here we have f2 44.24 the other side we have f3 72.72 we have f4 221 and we have f5 which is 320 kilometer 
So this distance is 16 plus y, 72.72, and this was 240, or 2 to 4 minus 2y, which, which is 110.56. So in the top flange, we know that it's a triangle or trapezoid distribution. Very accurate calculation, we can divide it to the rectangle and triangle and find out at what exactly what point. But the difference is very insignificant. We can assume that F1 is applying in the center of the flange or calculation of bending moment. Now, YY, we can assume that it is 56.72 plus half of so it is not exactly in the center, but as far as it's very small and very tiny, we can accept this approximation. Y2, it's two thirds of Y as far as it's triangle. Y3 is two thirds of 72.72, 48.48 millimeter. Y4 is half of 110.56 plus 72.72 .72. and y5 is this is 16 millimeter so 16 divided by 2 plus 110.56 plus 72.72 .72 millimeter now the bending moment that is required to yield the top flange will be summation of fi times yi so 570 64.71 plus 4424 37.8 72.72 72.72 72 times 4848 48 plus 221 128 plus 320 times 191.28 so it will be 131.6 kilonewton meter now let's compare with other results that we had. M Y was 102 kilonewton meter. M plastic 137.5, and M, where the top flange yields, is 131.6 kilonewton. The applied moment on this uh, cross section is given as to be 125 kilonewton meter. So, as far as it is greater than elastic moment. So it means that the cross section is not elastic anymore. And it's less than plastic moment. It means that it's partially plastic. And it is less than 131.6 kilonewton, meaning that the bending moment is such that the bottom of the neutral axis is partially plastic and the top is completely elastic. To find out the elevation of the cross section which is elastic, we sketch the beam from side. So here we know that uh, the top is not plastic, as a result it's less than sigma y, but the bottom is partially plastic. And here is the neutral axis, it is not in the same level as elastic neutral axis or plastic somewhere between. What is uh, unknown here is the stress level in the top flange because we know that it's less than sigma y and also the depth of being elastic. So I put this height to be y and this is 16 millimeter. Unlike the earlier calculation that the distance from the neutral axis towards the web depth that it was sigma y here this value is not 16 plus y because the top flange is not in the yield limit i named this y prime and now it is uh, like earlier we have f1 we have f2 we have f3 f4 and f5 so we can write down f1 is here we can find out what is the stress it's y divided by 16 plus y times sigma so f1 
is the average of this sigma on the flange which will be sigma plus y divided by 16 plus y sigma divided by 2 times area which is 160 and 60. f2 half of y over 16 plus y times sigma times this is the stress y times 8 millimeter is the area f3 1 over 2 sigma y times y prime times 8 millimeter f4 this height is 240 millimeter minus y minus y prime so it will be sigma y times 240 minus y minus y prime times 8 millimeter and f5 which is sigma y times 80 times 16. So one equation that we know is that sigma f is 0. As a result, f1 plus f2 should be the same as f3 plus f4 plus f5. And also here we know what bending moment applied to the cross section is. We just need to write down what is the height of the center of each force to the neutral axis. Like uh, earlier calculation, we can go with the very exact finding the center of sigma and y over 16 plus y sigma. But as far as the flange is very thin compared to the height of the cross section, we can assume that it's in the center. So y1 will be y plus 8 y2 is 2 third of y, y3 is 2 third of y prime, y4 is y prime plus 240 minus y minus y prime divided by 2, and y5 is y prime plus 240 minus y minus y prime plus 8 millimeter to the center of bottom flange. And the other equation we have is summation of moment is 125 kilonewton meter or fy1y plus f2y2 f5y5 is 125 kilonewton meter so we have two equations but here we have y sigma and y prime as uh, unknowns the easiest way is to write down the relation between y and y prime by looking at the stress distribution. So we can write down by the triangle principle. So sigma divided by 16 plus y is the same as sigma y divided by y prime. So this is relation between y prime, sigma, and y. So we have three equations and we have three unknowns. The easiest way is to go through, for example, MATCAD to solve this example f1 as a function of sigma and y is sigma plus y divided by so instead of 16 and 160 we can write down from the beginning that t top flange is 16 millimeter e web is 8 millimeter t of bottom flange is also 16 millimeter b of top flange equals to 160 millimeter height of web is 240 millimeter and the width of bottom flange equals to 80 millimeter sigma y equals to 250 megapascal so this is a t of top flange plus y times sigma divided by 2 times b of top flange times t of top flange f2 as a function of sigma and y equals to 1 over 2 times y divided by t top flange plus y times sigma times y times t of the web f3 as a function of sigma and y equals to 1 divided by 2 times sigma y times so here we can have another function or line prime or we can calculate it from the equation so i prefer to so here from this equation 
y prime will be sigma y multiplied by t top flange plus y divided by sigma so from here we can find out sigma uh, y prime is this one and whenever we see y prime we can just put this equation times 8 which is t of the web f4 as a function of sigma and y equals to sigma y times right of the web minus y minus y prime we have it here times dw and f5 it is not a function of mm, sigma and y but you have similar equations we can go that way sigma y times e of bottom flange times e of bottom flange right here bottom flange top flange bottom flange yes and y1 as a function of sigma and y equals to y plus tw t top flange divided by 2 this is half of 16 millimeter and y2 is 2 third of y y3 2 third of y prime y4 y prime plus hw minus y minus y prime divided by 2 and y5 so it will be hw minus y plus half of bottom flange thickness so now we can go through the solver block so first we can write down the guess values for example i assume that sigma uh, y would be something between 50 to perhaps so in plastic y was 40 millimeter when the top flange yields it will be around 56 millimeter so it means that this value should be greater than that so i will go with 60 millimeter and sigma should be less than sigma y for example i can start with 200 megapascal f1 as a function of sigma and y plus f2 equals to f3 plus f4 plus f5 one equation the other one is m equals to so here better to write down m as a given information 125 kilonewton meter so m equals to f1 times y1 plus 3 and 4 and finally 5 now here we just need to write down find sigma and y so here we can see that uh, uh, sigma is if you want to have the answers in a better shape you can write down with an array so here is sigma and the other one is y so now sigma is 220 megapascal and y is 70 millimeter so here we can see that uh, the depth of the web below the flange which is in elastic phase is 70 millimeter and now we can say what is the entire depth of the section which is in elastic phase so uh, depth of the section in elastic is 16 plus y plus y prime and also uh, sigma on the top flange is 220 megapascal so y prime we can calculate it by the written code here this was sigma prime, uh, y prime and it's 97.4 millimeter so 97.4 plus 70 plus 16 so the depth is 183.4 millimeter it's a steel in elastic phase yes that's the end of this example uh, i hope you enjoyed and learned how to calculate uh, partial plastic uh, asymmetric cross sections still 
This example was about homogeneous material, which is uh, the same in tension and compression. In the next uh, video, I will go through symmetrical cross section, but uh, with a material which behaves differently in tension and compression. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.